30 side population. We're not, you know, <laughs> we're a village. We're a village, but, you know, our parish extends and we have a decent parish size. Uh, and the numbers at the moment are pretty good we have in the club. But as I say, when you have, when you cater for all, when you cater, when you have to cater for all codes, it's, you, you know, we're not, we're not a Kilmacud or, or the Dublin clubs that we, we can put, put out to 10 or 12 on the 14 teams or whatever and got there. But, you know, the, the challenge for, for Ballon the Screen are, you know, we, we, we want to get back up the ladder again. And thankfully, this last few years, we've, we've had good, we've had good on the 15 team and uh, we've won a couple of championships with there. So, uh, so that, that's that's what, you know that's what has to start at you know when you look at the, when you look at the, the history of the, the success likes of Collins Club there Ballandere and the success they had of going on to win the All Ireland but you know that started at down the age level they had a later later minor team and I think it was ninety Collins I'll say there ninety six ninety seven that won twenty minor titles two in a row. And you know a lot of them boys went on and they won maybe six or seven championships with, uh, with uh, senior championships with, with that group of lads. Likewise, Glen here now, Glen are in the Lurden final tomorrow. They won four county titles in a row, four county minor titles in a row, and not alone. I think it was 2011 to 2014. Not alone did they won the county minor title. They went on to win the St Paul's tournament, which would be the equivalent of, as an Ulster minor uh, title. So uh, that's. That's where it has to start at. You have to start at the very bottom, the foundation, and 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 get the young lads through. Because if you if you don't have the proper structures at on the age level, and if you're not succeeding at on the age level, uh, then it's going to be very hard to come, to come through. Yes, there's 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 clubs that maybe I'm just looking at Owen Rose Corey in here in Derry. Uh, they have, they're they're a phenomenal club. What what they've done, you know, they won a senior championship a number of years ago, but they've always been knocking at the door. And you know, it's a, it's a real real credit to them because you know they, they had little success at on the age level, and you know, only for but a few families who drove the GA on down in that area, and the success they had, it's it's incredible. We also have Enda Gormley, uh, the former All Ireland winner, with yourself, Tony, from 1993 from Derry, and the former uh, Glenn Waddy Graham's manager on the line. Enda, how are you? Good, good, thanks. And uh, you must be absolutely buzzed about tomorrow, one of the biggest days in your life in a different way. Uh, are you going to be there as a fan? Am I going to be there? <laughs> I certainly intend to be there, yeah. Um, wild horses wouldn't drag me away. It's, uh, as you say, it's one of, the, one of the most exciting times in my life. So, um, how has it come to this? Because you were involved at underage level with Glenn and you must be really thrilled to see all the players that you were working with grow up and, and get to the stage now where they're battling it out with Kilmacud tomorrow for the big one. Hi, ah, yeah. Listen, as a Glenn man, it doesn't matter you're involved, with, uh, you've been involved in coaching us or not. Like every Glenn man and woman and child is, uh, is excited. It has been a great run for the last 15, 16 months since we won our first champ- uh, day championship. Um feed that sp- extra... Uh, Sebastian, when you know the lads very well, I would have coached them for a lot of years from um, from the, the main group, the older group of lads from under 14 for a year and then four years minors and four years of seniors and then some of the younger lads that had them at under 12s for a couple of years as well. In the middle of that, the four younger lads that wouldn't have been uh, wouldn't have been old enough to play in the, the four successful minor teams and three under 21 teams that Tony talks about. So I, I would know all the lads very well on a personal basis and you know, get the stage, uh, get the stage starting to go to their weddings and stuff. Now, Emma Bradley gets married now in three weeks' time, so that's the stage of growing up from from young lads at under fourteen to where we're at that stage with them now. And was it was there a no excuse policy that you had uh, with uh, lads uh, at underage teams? Was that something that you were you had? Yeah, we we had to change the culture. We 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 had a whole lot of things we had. We sat down at the start of this, and um, I. I uh, realised we had to do something. We were actually we were in a very, very low web. Uh, we could been in under 14 C championship match way back in mid 2000s, and uh, probably earlier than that actually. And because we had to start much earlier, some of the lads did a lot of good work at eight, ten, and twelves, which I wasn't involved in at that stage. I was still playing. Um, but when we sat down, we got them up to that competitive level of 14, 16 minors. Uh, we we said, right, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it properly, and we're going to change things. And we looked at the the reasons why we hadn't been successful in the past, and a uh, whole lot of things were on pitch discipline, off pitch discipline. A lot of things that we had to hold our hands up that we didn't do right ourselves, and stuff that we'd have been guilty of as 
a lot of the players uh, that I that I played with in my year who were all involved in that underage setup, and we we had a cold hard look at ourselves, and a lot of trysts were told, and we decided right, and I had to say to the lads, listen, your parents will tell you those boys were sweet trying to change discipline when they weren't great themselves, and and they were right, but we as we said, we made the mistakes, and and as you say, one of the, one of the things when we got deeper and deeper into it was no excuses. We always had a great team. Well, there's a great reason why we could beat them, blame somebody else, and we probably one of the things we tried to change was look in the mirror, stop blaming everybody else. What can we control the controllables? What can we do differently? Never worry about if the referee had a bad day or if whatever whatever happened outside that we couldn't control. That what is can we control and how can we change and give ourselves the best opportunity? And are you seeing that now with Malachi Works team? Oh, well, yeah, the lads have come up through that. So, like, Malgi has brought something different. I think when he, when he came in, he wouldn't have had any attitude, any problems with uh, these boys. Have been the, the big exemplary in their behaviour and the big exemplary in their their commitment. They're just they're really, really dedicated and they're really ambitious. Uh, so he came into that, but Malgi has brought a brought a control and a, a calmness, and he, he's just he's just took things on to a different level completely himself and Ryan Porter. The boys would have made crazy time for Ryan's. Uh, training and coaching as well. Uh, very, very, very top, very highly of both, both of them, and they've definitely moved things on to a greater level. Look, it's amazing the job he's done. He, what do you want to think of title with Loop? He's uh, got from Anna to an Ulster final. He's got a Monaghan to a, a an Ulster title as well uh, with. Um as a for man a man so he's got st- st- some definite skills and ingredients that really put him up there as one of the top GA managers and. I was out doubt, like we knew uh, there was an inkling when we were going looking somebody um, at the end of 2020 season we're going to look for a new manager and we knew we had a good group of players we we, we knew deep down that God and we have to, we have to give this one safe battle we wanted to try and see could we sorry about that could we get the best possible manager and we had a we had a contact within the club we had Margie up at a guest as a gala dinner and one of our members and uh, Bruno Mahal who had uh, two sons playing tomorrow uh, went to college with Malagi and uh, she gave, gave the chairman uh, the number and there was a lot of work done behind the scenes it was kept very quiet and uh, a couple of us had an inkling that it might be a possibility but uh, when we got across the line we couldn't believe her luck because we knew we had got possibly I, well I wouldn't even say possibly in my eyes without the best manager in Ulster if not Ireland Somebody's looking for tickets or a lift I think and, and for tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the things have been crazy for the last while tickets and I'm still there's people who've been brilliant uh, still get tickets through from people there this morning pushing through but I think most people are sorted out now. I think uh, I think at this stage but no there's, there's uh, the phone hasn't stopped and the, the good luck messages have come in from, from all over the world I had a couple from Australia text me yesterday that I shared a house with 30 years ago and I wouldn't have been that much contact and I suppose I've rattled that much on about the Waddies over the years that uh, people are remembering that it's my club and uh, uh, so still the great message and the, the good good wishes of people from all over it's been brilliant That's awesome uh, Enda Gormley Tony Scullion and Conneth Gilligan are with us on the Saturday panel we're going to take a break for the news uh, if you want to text us or uh, ask any questions to the lads 53106 on the club scene in general or anything about tomorrow's final Kilmichael Croaks against Glenn we have Baddy Hale and Dunloy as well and we have Liverpool against Chelsea at the moment in the Premier League it is goalless after 64 minutes uh, and Mudrick is on for Chelsea so that's interesting to see will there be a breakthrough in that Premier League early game at Anfield we're back after the news and off the ball Saturday with the Saturday panel don't go away we're on Twitter just look for at Newstalk FM for the latest updates From Terminal 2 to two-storey houses, compact apartments to corporate headquarters. Your bedroom, your kitchen, your office canteen, most every room that you've ever been. If these walls could talk, they could tell you who made them. So we'd like to share with you that little detail. We're the walls and the ceilings in fine Irish buildings. We're Jiprock for plaster and plasterboard systems. Jiprock, making the difference. Visit chiprock.ie. Get your job done for less at Screwfix. We've cut prices to help you save this winter. Like over 25% off the Arabera screwdriver bit set. Now just $8.95. And save €40 Euro on the Myra Atom Shower. Now only $139.95. Shop now online at screwfix.ie or in store. Screwfix, the choice of champions. While stocks last, prices valid until the 5th of February. Visit screwfix.ie for decent seats, delivery charges, and restrictions.
Insure My Van.ie Hi, I'm Ken Doherty. For all van drivers and business owners, Insure My Van.ie is Ireland's low-cost van and commercial insurance specialist. For high-quality van and all commercial insurances, call InsureMyVan.ie City Financial Marketing Group Limited, trading as InsureMyVan.ie, is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. The choices we make determine where we're going. Where will your choices take you? Away from diesel? towards lower harmful emissions and lower fuel costs. For thousands of Irish drivers, the choice is Toyota Hybrid Electric. See Ireland's best-selling hybrid electric range at your local dealer, including the Toyota CHR and Yaris Cross. Order today to avoid missing out. You'll never take a wrong turn with Toyota. Built for a better world. Best-selling car claim based on latest monthly published figures. At Ulster Bank, our team is continuing to close current and deposit accounts along with some of our branches. At this time, if your notice period and your deadline has passed, your account is now queued for closure. All personal and business account deadlines are fast approaching. You must take urgent action. If you are still relying on your bank account and in need of more support, please contact us immediately. Visit ulsterbank.ie, your local branch, or call 0818 210 260. Call costs may vary and calls from mobiles may not be free. Ulster Bank Ireland DAC is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. With the ongoing war in Ukraine affecting the cost of energy, many of us are facing a challenging winter. Through Budget 23, Government is introducing a range of supports to lessen the financial impact on families, households and businesses. And will continue to monitor the situation in the coming months to protect those in difficulty. It's important that everyone stays warm and well, but where safe and possible to do so, reducing energy use can also reduce bills. Changes like turning your thermostat down by one degree and considering how often you use energy-intensive appliances like tumble dryers can make a big difference. For information on available supports and energy-saving advice, visit gov.ie forward slash reduce your use. Brought to you by the Government of Ireland. The Harvey Norman Big Sale ends soon with deals across our massive range of beds, mattresses and bed linen. Shop our range of chic and stylish bed frames from as little as €129. Get top-selling Irish-made mattresses by brands like Odearest, K-Med and Briody from just €179. Plus, speak to our sleep specialists in-store about our free delivery and mattress recycling service. But hurry, the Harvey Norman Big Sale must end soon. Don't miss out. Go! Every year, in the GAA, something unique happens. First-class rivals suddenly become first-class teammates. Fierce inter-county foes turn into friends, and yesterday's opponents now have each other's backs. Grudges set aside, all of the best club and county players from every corner of this country line out in their college or university jerseys to play together, challenge together, and win together. It can only be the Electric Ireland Sigerson, Fitzgibbon and Higher Education Championships. The Pat Kenny Show. You've given me a picture of a, a bike being stolen. I saw a guy basically going at a bike, clearly trying to break the lock open. I took a photo of him, and at that point, I decided it was not in my best interest necessarily stick around too long because he didn't seem to be deterred from what he was doing. So he kept at, at the bike, even though you took a picture of him? Yeah. The Pat Kenny Show. With Aviva Insurance. Weekdays at 9 a.m. on News Talk. On 106 to 108 FM. On the News Talk app, powered by Go Loud and Smart Speakers. This, this is News Talk. It's two o'clock. Good afternoon. I'm Alex Rowley. Protesters marching against hospital overcrowding say lives are on the line. Hundreds of people are taking to the streets at 18 hospitals around the country today to demand an end to the trolley crisis. The action began at 11am this morning with a rally at University Hospital Limerick. Nolene Moran, a coordinator of the Midwest Hospital Campaign, says they're suffering the consequences of a 2009 decision to downgrade Ennis, Nina and St John's hospitals. People are dying as a result of the overcrowding in the emergency departments and, and the, those people are people in, living in our communities, people that matter to us and uh, you know it's really not good enough. It's been going on far, far too long and uh, so that's 
what we hope to achieve from today, that we will uh, get our politicians to start speaking up on this issue. A woman's body has been discovered after a car was spotted in a river in Mayo overnight. Gardaí and emergency services rushed to the scene near Hoban's car park in Castle Bar shortly before midnight. The woman in her 30s, who was the driver of the car, was pronounced dead at the scene. A post-mortem is due to take place at a later date and Gardaí are appealing for witnesses in the area between 10pm and midnight to come forward. Across Ireland, communities are coming together today in solidarity with refugees. A number of welcome rallies are being held in Dublin to celebrate diversity. Speaking at a welcome rally in Clondalkin, local councillor Hazel de Nortune says a shortage in refugee accommodation is not the fault of people arriving here. One woman who has been here for a few years and another man who's here for five months with his wife and both were speaking about how that they don't want to come in and take anybody's necessities away from them or needs away from them or housing or anything like that to kind of bust through some of the myths um, and that they were volunteering in the tidy towns. They've been trying their best to integrate in. And Free Now have pulled their sponsorship of the Tommy Tiernan show. The announcement follows a controversial joke Tiernan made about taxi drivers during a comedy set last week. RTE presenter Emer O'Neill walked out of the show stating the joke was overtly racist. The comedian has since apologised to Miss O'Neill and pulled the item from his set. It's two minutes past two. News Talk Weather. Thanks to Ryanair. See your Premier League team this year with daily flights to Liverpool, Manchester and London. Cloudy or overcast this afternoon with scattered patches of mist, drizzle or light rain about. Most persistent over the south and southeast this afternoon and evening. Highs of 7 to 10 degrees. And now you're up to date on News Talk. Off the ball. This is News Talk. And welcome back to Off the Ball Saturday here on News Talk. John Duggan with you through to five. Liverpool nil, Chelsea nil after 72 minutes at Anfield in the Premier League. This has not been great stuff, to be honest, folks. Uh, Mudrick is on and he's fast <laughs> for Chelsea in the second half, replacing Lewis Hall. Um, Havertz had the ball in the back of the net early doors. It was ruled out for an offside. Uh, Thiago had Liverpool's only shot on target in the first half. Gakpo has been lively in the second half. And Nunez has come on for Keita but it's not been brilliant so far Liverpool and Chelsea almost showing that they're ninth and 10th in the Premier League going into this afternoon's match much more action involved in the game in the Championship between uh, Coventry and Norwich it's Coventry 2 Norwich 4 at the moment in that game and Shane Larry tied for the lead going into the final round of the Abu Dhabi Championship a tournament he's won before 13 under par following a 66 today he's alongside Minwoo Lee and Francesco Molinari Padraig Carrington vintage wine a 64 He's 11 under par and he's only two shots off the pace. Brilliant stuff from Paul Carrying today. Seamus Power is seven under par. So we're with the Saturday panel at 2.35. By the way, we're having an interview with uh, Ballyhale Shamrocks player Michael Fenley, uh, the former Ballyhale captain. Of course, he's retired now from the club and county game ahead of that hurling final in the club scene against Dunloy tomorrow. But right now we're speaking to three Derry natives, Enda Gormley, Conneth Gilligan and Tony Scullion ahead of the Glen Kilmogo Croaks match and the club scene in general on the Saturday panel. That's the football final, half three tomorrow at Croke Park. In 1995, uh, Conneth, I was uh, in school near Kilmogood, and they brought the All-Ireland Trophy into the school, probably because they had the links with the uh, a club to winning team of that year, 1995. And it was just a great thing for a young lad to, to see the All-Ireland Trophy. And Kilmogood Croke's a, a massive success story, Conneth. Uh, a chance for them to make amends to losing that final last year so narrowly to Kilku in, in extra time. Um, who are the potential match winners for Kilmacud in your view, Conneth? Yeah, look, I think in terms of the way the game goes up, midfield is going to be massive. Um, like Craig Dias has had a brilliant year, as has Ben Shovlin. But they're coming up against the midfield, which is county standard in every sense of the word. You know, Connor Glass has, has just, everything he's touched has turned to gold this year. And even in the semi final, where he wasn't as good as he normally is, and I think he was carrying sickness into it. Emmett Bradley was able to step up there and kick three points and, and, and possibly man in the match for me that day. So I think midfield is going to be where it's won. Both teams will see a weakness in the opposition's kickouts based on how the semi finals finished, even though they've been very strong up until this point. So there'll be big, heavy presses on both sides. And I think whichever team can get primary possession, that's going to go a long way to determining where the cup finishes at the end of the game. And Rory O'Carroll still going strong for Kilmacud. Yeah, of. he's been absolutely brilliant. Um, especially whenever the game against Kerner Rahleys had turned against them a wee bit, he came out and he was the extra man round midfield that broke the ball. And whenever they were on top, it was him that made the difference, getting into their balls, making the breaks. And like he's been exceptional. Bear in mind, he's done marking jobs all year and he's still scored 2 4. 
and there were goals and points at crucial stage of games as they weren't wherever the games were over. So I think Rory Carroll is making a mockery of his age and uh, and obviously he keeps himself in great shape. And I think between him and, and the likes of Aidan Jones, who didn't play last year, I thought Aidan Jones was exceptional the last day as, as one of the new players in along with Theo Clancy. So I think there's a lot of positives in terms of where Kilmacott are this year from last year. Uh, and the ex- sorry, go on. Sorry, go ahead. And I was just saying, the experience of losing is massive and sometimes they would they would obviously say that you have to lose one to win one and, and they'll be hoping that's true but Glenn will be going with no fear um, this is just a team that just look like they're playing completely um, on the crest of a wave a Cotter Glass Tony Scullion has been a real um, old style presence almost in the midfield hasn't he he's been the nice. fulcrum of the team he's absolutely and you know them few years in Australia were, were, were brilliant for were brilliant for Connor. he come back an absolutely real man and, and so athletic, covers the ground, real team player. You know, he, as I say, he's up and down. He he, he senses where the danger's at. He he, he fails back. Um, as I say, he just he's just he's just an all rounder, a very grounded person too, and 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 and, and treats the next game as if it was his last game. So now he's he's absolutely great, absolutely. It's just just a pity. It's just a pity, and uh, you know, Glenn, Glenn have done without him the whole year. Kieran McFall, he's. It's just a pity. He's, you know, Kieran has been, uh, you know, he's been a great player for both Glenn and Derry this last number of years. Possibly the best player in Derry <laughs> for a number of years there. And unfortunately, he's not about at the moment. But um, they've lived, they've been fitted to play. Uh, they've been living without him. Uh, and uh, there's no reason, you know, this lad's really stepped up the plate. Michael Warnock has went up the centre back there and has done a, a great, great job. But again, back to your man you've mentioned, Connor Glass. He's been absolutely brilliant, but he needs a good supporting role. And one thing about this Glen team at the moment, they are all playing as a team, and they're they're not afraid of any occasion. And these lads have been used to one, and uh, they're not fear going to Crow Park tomorrow. And uh, can you see nerves at all being an issue, it seems, from Connors and Tony, that um, they're pretty confident that Glenn will be uh, keeping their heads on the ground. Are there any kind of techniques that can keep them grounded? Because I know, look, they've got experience winning Ulster titles, but this is another proposition. Yeah, well, I often complain to this that at pressure a 14 or 15, 16 year old lad is in playing in a county minor final and his head is as big as anything he's ever going to have in his life and you know these lads have come through high lot of high pressure games at like there was a stage ourselves in Slack Neil we were playing in underage games and the crowds at it were unbelievable they were bigger than some of the senior championship games at the time and the pressure for young lads to come through that pressure at that age I remember thinking at the time it wasn't fair and um, but I always said if they come through that they'll come through anything and our lads think like that and they'll actually say from the big occasion yeah there has to be an element of nerves uh, I don't care how long you're playing football we all had an element of nerves but it's, that nerves can be a great thing uh, it depends who you channel that and uh, Malachy believe me is, is, is a great mind doctor and uh, he has, has them and the big thing I would have said about this team this year is that our two best performances have been in the two finals that we played this year we had done as underdogs against Slatnil. Uh, the whole word in the county was that they had got themselves prepared better. Um, we were obviously without Kieran McCall, as Tony has mentioned there, and Slatnil had done a lot of work and they really thought they'd made a lot of mistakes. And we had won that game very comprehensively. It was without doubt our best game in the day. Uh, we had a mixed run in the Ulster Club, uh, but again, we went into as underdogs against Kilku and turned in an arm massive performance that day. So, so big day doesn't worry these lads. Um, you know, big games are all relative, and you keep getting bigger. And I, I wouldn't be too worried about that tomorrow any more than it will be that um, it has to be. You can take the pros and the cons. It has to be a wee bit of element of doubt in the back of Kilmacud's head. You know, we lost one last year. Is there a wee bit of fear? Can be a motivating factor. Some people turn it into a positive. Or people can, if we can put the pressure on, can, it, can we turn that into a negative? That's, you know, all the individuals are different. And everybody, we're all wired differently. And uh, we'll all react differently on the big day. And what about Kilmacud's strengths? What do you see those as, uh, Enda? They're a very good all-round team. I suppose you don't get to this level of having any weaknesses. They, um, they're obviously very good at closing down, filling the space in the middle of the back. 
strong midfield and they have six going forwards. Uh, that's the thing about them, maybe more so than maybe some of the teams that we have played up to this. Um, any of them give them a ball in that scoring zone. Uh, they're all capable, of, very capable of putting over bars, so they get a range. And then when you float Ian Walsh and obviously in that team that could beat last year, like you know, it's uh, it's just a massive addition to him, and he he creates things apart from what he scores himself. So his run ability to drive out the opposition defences, and he creates opening for some of the rest of them. So um, they they have a very good all round scoring ability, and that would probably be uh, probably at a higher all round level than than we would than anything else. That's and probably anything else is out there in Ireland at club level. Connell, I was kind of keeping an eye on Fossa against uh, Stuart and Harps last week, and uh, great for the Cliffords and everything, but six red cards. Um, does club football have a discipline problem in your view? No, I don't think it has any more a discipline problem than, than the county game. Right. Uh, I think anybody watching that game last week, and while it finished a wee bit unsavoury, I think in terms of the context of the game, it was a very good game and it was played in very good spirits, and I think as David Clifford touched on himself, the emotion that's involved in it, and sometimes that can boil over. Like, bear in mind, these are Stewartstown players who haven't had a huge amount of success. You know, they were relegated from intermediate football. They won an Ulster club. They got to a final against the most talented junior team ever to play football And when you have the two Clifford. So, yes, it boiled over. But, like, I don't think, outside of the elbow, there was anything much more in it. You know, like, Clifford's... The two Cliffords got red cards, um, as did Devlin, but there wasn't much in it. It was really only the elbow, and apart from that, it spilled over. But I think there's just so much at stake. There's so much work goes into this. You know, like that Stewartstown team have, had to travel to Glasgow the week before Christmas to play in the uh, quarter final of that competition. There's just so much puts into it, and I think there's no more discipline or problem. Um, but I think probably players do have to step back and take a look of, of what's acceptable and what's not acceptable and try and play within the limits. Yeah, Do you think there's a cultural issue in Gaelic football around um, the over-physicality as it were of, of the game and, and, and that then spilling over into the elbow, the, these kind of things that we saw last week? Is it unedifying, yeah, well, I, I suppose, is my kind of my, my question. Yeah, look, it absolutely is. And anybody watching it, you know, you can't justify elbows. You can't justify punches off the ball. You know, look, there's a high tackle or there's a there's an off-the-ball issue where it's involved in contact and where the ball's there. That's a different thing. But anything off the ball, no, it can't be justified. But what you have to understand is that players, whether it's a... That, like, bear in mind, last week's game was junior football, you know, the third division in every competition. So it's not Glenn, it's not Kilham And yet you look at the conditioning, you look at the size of those players, the work they're putting in. Players are bigger, faster, stronger than they ever were. And when they make contact at full pace... Like, it is dangerous, you know, and, and they're the things that referees are watching out for. But where there's no clear definition of what a tackle is, what a black card is, can be edgy as well. So it's it's very, very difficult for referees, as it is for players, to know exactly where the parameters are. Tony, do you see any kind of cultural issue around um, the physicality of football and it being over the line? No, no. And you know this, uh, sometimes we get that. We we get the blame up here in the north or in Ulster for the over physical part of the game uh, and that's absolutely crazy no no going, going back to that game last week yeah there was there was another tackle there was a head high tackle in that game uh, uh, and you no know, yeah. it was a, it was a very 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 dangerous tackle also and uh, uh, so and it wasn't you know it it, it was uh, it wasn't a Stewartson player um, uh, so uh, so what I'm saying is yes the, the, there was a couple of tackles in the game. But, uh, you know, the rest of the game and this crack of, you know, we play the game, you play it hard and fair and, and you, you, you give it all, yes. And sometimes it can be, it can overboil and, and it can happen anywhere in Ireland. And, you know, and when we are talking about uh, intermediate and junior club football, another thing the powers to be need to look at, you know, there's teams, there's clubs playing uh, in maybe senior leagues in their county or the, or in the intermediate league or whatever, but they're playing in the junior championship and and senior maybe a senior team playing in an intermediate championship. No, you no, know, that should not be the case. You know, if you're playing in senior, you, you you play if you play in the senior league, then you play in the senior championship. So that's something that certainly has to be looked at because, as I say, Fossa last week, 
you know, uh, I think they play in a higher league. So should, should they prevail? Should they be even playing in the junior championship? I question that, quite honestly. Yeah, and I'm just kind of, uh, I suppose, look, these things always get highlighted, don't they? And um, it, with TV coverage and especially with smartphones and, and clips and everything now. But um, it just seems like there was a, Larry McCarthy was talking about referees and a culture and a shift that needs to happen. The GA president of the association, he's right about that. I was thinking about Derry Tresk and Dermot, Dermot, Dermot Pierce is a, like over a decade ago. is absolutely crazy stuff. And maybe these things are highlighted with all the club games and so many of them go on around the country. In your view, is there a discipline problem in club football and Gaelic football? Not really. Listen, there's some things that we don't want in any sport, but I, I think, of, first of all, you're talking about highlighting Gaelic football. Uh, was it any worse than the things that was in the Holland game there before Christmas, um, where there was a, a Lancaster final, where there, and the media final, I think it was, where there was an awful lot of those crazy scenes, which is far worse than I saw in England football. Secondly, I think you want to compare it to our sports. The problem is that our sports are that high profile, and that, as, as Connell said, that's junior football. If you go down the levels of rugby and soccer, don't tell me there's not similar incidents, there's some, not similar levels of discipline involved in those sports. But they're just the fact that there's not the same press coverage and they're not on TV. And unfortunately, in most sports, when you, when you go down the levels, you'll find that discipline mightn't be quite as good. That's not to say it's acceptable. It's not to say it's something we can't improve on. Uh, and it's something we always have to try and aim. And certainly your point with the referees, we definitely need to be treating the referees at all levels. And we, we do read press reports that possibly not rugby, but certainly soccer and the, we definitely have to improve that and take it access. And when the more we do and the more respect we treat referees, the better referees we will get. And uh, it'll be a it will keep feeding and it will you know, it'll help it'll help them the quality of referee and will then help the discipline on the pitch. Um, but it's something we look at. But I, I don't think I don't like the fact that it's been highlighted as if we're football and particularly all northern football has, has been way worse than anybody else. I think if you go through all the sports at a similar level and if you were to really trawl trawl down through the, the uh, discipline levels in all the sports that maybe aren't getting the same press coverage, you'll find that the discipline levels are in uh, Gaelic football is at least as good, if not better. 87 minutes in the watch, Liverpool nil, Chelsea nil in the Premier League at Anfield. Um, just on Derry, look, we're speaking, I suppose, about what uh, the club um, success of Glenn is doing for the parish, the community there, Connacht Gilligan. Well, Rory Gallagher, that Ulster title win and the ro- road to the All Ireland semi final, h- how has that uh, invigorated Derry football in the county, as it were, if at all? Yeah, look, I think it's been massive. I think a lot has been made of Derry games with those two and 300 people turning up because for a large part of the last decades we were operating in Division 3 and Division 4. So, and, and that's normal. But I think what Rory Gallagher has brought is a, a group of young players who have showed real pride in the jersey again. Yeah, and that has coincided with them getting up into Division 2 and having a run. And obviously that breakthrough Ulster Championship is just massive. And you started to see kids wearing Derry jerseys again. And I think anybody that watched the All-Ireland last year, if the final whistle in Clonus when Derry beat Donegal wasn't one of the scenes of the year. I don't know what was because the outpouring of emotion, five, six, seven thousand people on the pitch, it was just incredible. And I think getting to Crook Park, winning the game at Crook Park, and while the Galway game didn't go to plan, I think there was a lot of learnings. And I think Derry have kicked on from that again. And, and I think what you're going to look at tonight in Derry and Tyrone is probably one of the most anticipated games in the Mechanic Cup there's been for a long time. And while Whoever gets a cup doesn't matter. I think the statement of intent from whichever team wins tonight, seven days into a league game, is just going to be massive. Derry and Tyrone throws in at six o'clock at the Atlantic Grounds in the Dr. McKenna Cup final. Um, I, when I was looking at Donegal, Connors, back in, say, 2011, they broke through in Ulster and they made they lost that, that match to Dublin, that terrible, but it was brilliant in one way and terrible in another way, eight, eight points to six. But then they progressed. They trained on under Rory Gallagher and Jimmy Guinness, the manager, won the All-Ireland the next year. Is there almost like another cycle of a progression with this Derry inter-county team in your view? Yeah, I think so. I think obviously Derry done a huge body of work last year. They got themselves into incredible shape. Their physicality was top drawer and I think they'll have probably built on that. Again, this year there's looked at the likes of the young Lachlan Murray who came in and won an All-Ireland minor. He has now played in the McKenna Cup and has looked really, really good. Owen McAvoy from Maharafelt has come in and he looks like another player that while he's very young could slot into that very quickly. Derry will be operating with a very similar team and a very similar panel in last year. And the big question is, can they unearth another forward that's going to chip in with scores to help Shane McGuigan? Because in Croke Park, whenever Galway were moving with Comer and Shane McGuigan wasn't at the pitch of the game just as he normally is, 
Derry didn't have anybody to pick up that slack. And I think that's the one thing that Derry need to find is another really prolific scorer that's a foil for Shane McGuigan. 30 years uh, this year, uh, Andy Gormley and Tony Scullion since Derry's only All Ireland win, 1993. Uh, and uh, are you preparing for a lot of dinners this year, are you? Preparing for another dinner. A lot of dinners, a lot of uh, kind of uh, memory dinners. <laughs> uh, well, no, I'm not so sure. Um, just trying to get out, boys, like Tony out for a night there. It wouldn't be that easy <laughs> anymore. He's slowing down badly. But um, no, we, we, we'll certainly try to meet up funny. We just. Uh, we were just a bit of a brief discussion before Christmas, but I don't think there's going to be. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any official gigs. But we, it's something we're wary of. We've discussed uh, at length that we're not meeting up often enough because, uh, as I say, as note, none of us are getting any younger, and it's it's good just to get together, and not so much to reminisce, but to, just to meet up and uh, enjoy the crack, and probably it's actually to slag each other and uh, have a bit of fun and remember, uh, just uh, just to keep just to keep the the, the crack going uh, because there were some great days and you. It's like any team, you go through a lot of hard stuff and we had a lot of hardships and we had a lot of, a lot of bad days as well as the good days and a lot of hard nights and like uh, sacrifices made. So it's, it's good to get together and, and have, have a good bit of a laugh because we, we had a great bond as a group of lads as, as most successful teams would be. And um, So no, I, I don't think I'm too official, but I would be very hopeful now maybe in the not too distant future we'll get together and... Uh, and uh, test each other's medal again to see who's good, very delicate as regarding a bit of a bit of slagging. Yeah, no shared uh, journey and great memories of of nineteen ninety three. Do you know where your medal is? Uh, and uh, do you still have the medal? Uh, I give it to me more. So uh, <laughs> medals mean don't mean a lot to me. You know, medals or trophies or that sort of all stars that sort of thing uh, don't take away the memories. But um, all my Ulster medals and national leagues and Ferguson's and stuff I got there would be all in a big sweet jar uh, box. Uh, somewhere upstairs um, in Northhurst but those you know, things don't mean an awful lot to me but uh, don't uh, don't for one second take away the memories or try to say anything bad about the, about the achievements um, of one of them it's just the actual practical medals wouldn't be a, wouldn't be a big thing in my mind Tony it's uh, as I said a shared journey and a, an amazing achievement for the county back in 1993 and it's good to reconnect with uh, your old teammates and uh, see them because I'm sure there are years go by when you don't see them Absolutely, John. Absolutely, and uh, unfortunately, in the past year there, we we got together, but unfortunately, it was in a sad a sad occasion. We lost one of our our players of that uh, team, Colin McGurk, and um, un- un- unfortunately, unfortunately, we don't meet up enough, and 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 times we do meet up, it's it can be, an, an, as I say, it's can be a, an, a sad occasion. So, no, I'd say, and then the rest of us, we will. We will, and we don't. We we do not meet up enough, and we should. And hope hope we can meet up this year because uh, it was it was a very special time in Derry. Uh, it was history making. It was uh, the one and only that has come to the county um, in the history of Derry GA, and it was special to be part of it. And, and um, you know, you can't you can't beat. You just can't beat it. You know, uh, the, you know that nothing will replace those memories of 19 and 93 and we know we had a great we had a great panel of players and um we we really we you know our club football back then it was tough it was hard we went out and we battled against each other but one thing whenever we got together as a county we we we, we battled together and it it brought us great rewards do you ever watch the tape back tony do you of the final <laughs> do you know this <laughs> No, I don't. I don't. Unfortunately, you know, as many as the time I say, I would sit down to watch it. And I, I, I don't. And it's maybe we I should be should be doing it more often. It's, uh, but I, I don't. So maybe I've been lucky if I watched it once or twice since since the since the all earned success. But uh, no, uh, we'll get time to do it yet. Hopefully. Very good. Connors, how'd you call tomorrow's game? Glenn and Kilmacud, you know both uh, clubs very well. Glenn from this year, uh, a bit painfully, and Kilmacud from last year. Yeah, look, and uh, it's very hard to call. Both teams very similar for me um, in terms of they're very good in their own kickout. They're very good trying to stop the opposition kickout. Kilmacud have more questions to answer for me than Glenn do. Glenn will play the same team. They'll have the same setup. Kilmacud put on a very high press, which works against most teams, and no teams can get out against them. Glenn of pace and power in 5 and 7 and 10 and 12, where other teams mightn't have. So 
Kilmacud might have to change their strategy. They go man to man at the back a lot. So I just think that Glenn's style to try and stifle the likes of Shane Walsh is not about Warnock will pick him up in a man to man type basis, but it'll be about the players getting around to defend. I think that Glenn won't have any fear of Kilmacud. The big advantage they'll have is that they played a semi final in Croke Park. A lot of teams go and play Kilmacud in Croke Park and have not played there before are we a bit overawed by it. Glenn and stages of the game last week did look like they weren't really used to the post and the kick and they've got that out of their system now and I think Glenn probably by the minimum maybe a point. Very good. And uh, Enda Gormley, what's the plan tomorrow? A big Ulster fry on the road to Dublin early? Oh, going on the road to Dublin now as soon as this call's over. Um, uh, there's a big the town, this last person out of the town tonight call, turns off the lights. Uh, it's massive, massive lot of uh, people heading down tonight and uh, they're all meeting up now I think if anybody wants uh, wants to go into the Crew Park Hotel tonight now you might you might get a, a drink brought to you and the uh, whole town now is, has massive euphoria around the place and uh, people that I've never saw at football matches are running around with colours hanging my car and scarves and uh, it was great to see everybody bought into it and we have good there's great support now uh, behind the boys and uh, just massive euphoria so like what the few people that aren't going down tonight they're going down I think there's a couple of buses going down in the morning um, but an awful lot of people going down so I'll get on the road as early as possible I'm just going down there I'm sort of like a minder trying to look after the rest of the boys who travel to keep them in tow so they uh, behave themselves tonight Yeah no they need to be early as bad to some degree because uh, tomorrow's a huge day you're putting a shiver down my spine and Gormley look the best look tomorrow Thank you very much. Thank you. And Tony and Connors, thanks for coming on and uh, enjoy the game tomorrow. Glenn and Kilmacud. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. Brilliant stuff. Enda Gormley, Tony Scullion, Connors Gilligan on the Saturday panel speaking about Glenn and Kilmacud in the club football final tomorrow. Goalless is the result from Anfield, Liverpool and Chelsea in the Premier League and in the Championship Norwich have beaten Coventry by four goals to two. We're back after the break speaking to Michael Fenley about Bally Hale and Dunloy. Off the ball on News Talk. Screen Time with John Fardy. This week on Screen Time, I talked to Dave Fishwick, the first man in a hundred years to try and set up his own bank in the UK, whose life is now at the centre of the Netflix hit movie Bank of Dave. I talked to Irish director Connor McMahon about his new horror comedy, Let the Wrong One In. And we review Damien Chazelle's Hollywood epic Babylon. Screen Time with John Fardy. Listen and subscribe to the podcast now or tune in this evening from six on News Talk. From Terminal 2 to two-story houses, compact apartments to corporate headquarters, your bedroom, your kitchen, your office canteen, most every room that you've ever been. If these walls could talk, they could tell you who made them. So we'd like to share with you that little detail. We're the walls and the ceilings in fine Irish buildings. We're Jiprock for plaster and plasterboard systems. Jiprock, making the difference. Visit jiprock.ie. Hi, Catherine Tracy here. Do you need to relax and breathe and take time out? Make your bathroom a sanctuary. Start with a visit to Versatile Bathrooms, the most beautiful, quirky bathroom showroom around. See working spas, 